Hi everyone, we're presenting Combi's Last Wishes, a Volkswagen campaign implemented in Brazil in 2013. So Volkswagen is a German automaker founded in 1937 and headquartered in Wolfsburg, Germany. It is the mark of Volkswagen Group, which consists of 12 brands, including Audi and Bentley. Volkswagen's current slogan is its own name, referencing its German meaning, the people's car. So we're going to go through a company timeline to get us better acquainted with uh, Volkswagen. So before we get into VW's presence in Brazil and the campaign, let's go over a brief history. So as stated earlier, VW was founded in 1937 after Adolf Hitler ordered the production of Ferdinand Porsche's beetle-shaped Volks Auto vehicle in 1933 so that all citizens of the Third Reich could have access to the people's car. The first production plant was opened in Wolfsburg in 1939, which was used to produce military vehicles throughout World War II. Between 1945 and 1948, the plant is bombed, taken over by British Allied forces, then reorganized under West German control. The Volkswagen Type 1 Beetle was exhibited in the U.S. for the first time shortly after that, and in 1969, VW merged two of its acquired companies, Auto Union and NSU Motor & Work, to create the modern-day luxury brand Audi. The automaker continued to expand globally and acquire new brands and businesses, and in 1998, VW Group acquired Lamborghini, Bentley, and Bugatti brands after a great sales year in the U.S. And in 2009, VW and Porsche announced a merger where VW took 49.9% stake in Porsche for $5.75 billion. This catches us up to the infamous VW emission scandal taking height in 2015. So in September of 2015, the Environmental Protection Agency issued a violation of the Clean Air Act against Volkswagen. It was discovered that VW had intentionally programmed turbocharged direct injection diesel engines to activate their emission controls only during laboratory testing. This means that the vehicle's nitrogen oxide output met U.S. standards during testing, but in reality emitted over 40 times more nitrogen oxide. VW pleaded guilty and the CEO resigned. After announcing a recall campaign, a U.S. judge ordered VW to pay a $2.8 billion criminal fine in 2017. You can see the stock price fell by a third in the days immediately after the news. VW worked on refitting vehicles and handling lawsuits for a few years, and in 2019 introduced a new mission, vision, and value statement, along with environmental impact and compliance and risk management plans. All of this fall, fall under what VW calls Together 2025+. Plus. VW didn't have an explicit mission statement until 2019. You can see by its new mission statement that VW is trying to rebuild trust and credibility by focusing on cus customer needs, corporate responsibility, and integrity. The company's new vision statement, Shaping Mobility for Generations to Come, as well as its values, show that it is trying to build a more accountable image with regards to sustainability and driver safety during a time when consumers are looking for cars that are less damaging to the environment. VW currently has 122 production plants worldwide. A majority are in Germany, but there are six in Brazil. Formerly a military dictatorship, Brazil is a federal republic consisting of the Union, the states, the federal district, and the municipalities. The national government consists of the executive, legislative, and judicial branches, and the government is based in the capital city of Brasilia. Brazil has 15 political parties that make up their Congress, but there are four main political parties in Congress. The Workers' Party, the Brazilian Social Democracy Party, the Brazilian Democratic Movement, and the Democrats. The executive branch is made up of an elected president and cabinet, and the legislative branch is made up of an elected national congress. Alternatively, the judicial branch is made up of appointed judges based on entry exams and justices appointed by the president. Unlike in the U.S., voting is required by law in Brazil for those 18 to 70, but is optional for people who are 16 to 18 or are illiterate. I Jair Bolsonaro, a member of the Social Liberal Party, is the current president of Brazil and was elected in 2018, but is controversial because of his conservatism and insensitive comments. The president's role and responsibilities are reflected in the Constitution. He or she serves a four-year term and can be re-elected. Still, the president can run again in the future after his or her two terms have ended. Brazil's economic freedom score sits at 51.9%, so it, so it is the 150th freest nation. 
Still, it is below the world's average. Brazil, after their 2018 election, is moving away from their centralized government model that limits economic growth. The country is the world's fifth largest country in the world and the largest e economy in South America with a population of over 200 million and a GDP of over 3 trillion. To combat Brazil's economic problems, Bolsonaro moved away from the liberal ideologies of past presidents and opted for a more conservative approach consisting, consisting of lowering the price of tariffs, signing trade deals and shifting towards privatization and decreasing public debt by 20%. He also simplified the tax system and got rid of some pension benefits. Brazil's situation improved, but the government lacked concern for the environment and issues like deforestation increased despite the Amazon being one of their primary sources of income. Unfortunately, mega events like the World Cup in 2014 and the Olympics in 2016 had only short-term impacts on Brazil's economy because the country was in the midst of a recession. Brazil's Corruption Percentage Index score is a 35 out of 100, so although they are improving and aren't as corrupt as places like the United Arab Emirates, their score is still on the lower end of the spectrum. We'll discuss the corruption related to their military dictatorship in a later slide. In 2014, Operation Car Wash investigated Petrobras, an oil company that accepted bribes from fake firms for agreeing to provide products for inflated prices. The Workers' Party became involved when they were accused of using some of this money to pay off politicians. Former beloved president serving from 2003 to 2010, Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva, in involvement in the scandal resulted in him serving prison time and being barred from completing his run in the 2018 elections. Dilma Rousseff, president of Brazil from 2011 to 2016, was impeached because she was accused of illegally moving funds between government budgets. Skeptics believe her opposition wanted her out of office because she would not cover up ties to Operation Car Wash. TV, including stations like TV Band and Rede Globo, dominated Brazil's media and proved just how concentrated media ownership is in the country. More specifically, telenovelas and game shows are, popu are popular both regionally and internationally. Although Brazil's constitution allows for a free press system, private media is often owned by those who, with political connections. Brazil scored 105 in the, World press, in the World Press Freedom Index, so there are problems within the country. Unfortunately, according to Reporters Without Borders, Brazil is a dangerous place for journalists as a, as a consequence of widespread corruption, and politicians often limit the voices of journalists through harsh laws. Online, speech is sometimes limited through similar legislation. With over half of Brazil being online, the use of social media like Facebook and WhatsApp is at an all-time high. Brazil's internet penetration is at 59.68% and 51% of Brazil's households have a computer. Overall, 52.4% of Brazil's households have internet access. As far as education, the mean year of schooling in Brazil is around 7.8 years of schooling. Brazil has a high literacy rate of 99%. Media penetration percentages in Brazil vary. 59.68% of individuals in Brazil use the internet. 12.97% of indi individuals have cable subscriptions and 89.51% of individuals have active phone subscriptions. Before we get started with Hofstede's cultural dimensions, Brazil's predominant language is Portuguese and the two predominant religions are Roman Catholicism and Protestantism. Brazil has a score of 69 per power distance, which means Brazil's society believes that hierarchy should be respected and inequalities are acceptable among all people. For individualism, Brazil has a score of 38, which exemplifies the fact that the country values, relationships, and community. The third highest score for Brazil is indulgence, which displays Brazilians' desire to act as they please and enjoy leisure time. Volkswagen do Brazil was founded in 1953 with the opening of its first plant in Sao Paulo focused on manufacturing the Beetle by hand. In its first two years, over 2,200 Beetles, also known as Fuscas in Brazil, and 550 Combis were assembled. VW do Brasil grew as the biggest producer of vehicles in Brazil and VW's group's biggest member company outside of Germany. In the 1970s, around 250 special edition combis were produced there as well. 
During the Brazilian military dictatorship from 1964 to 1985, basic employee rights were abolished along with other freedoms. VW do Brasil had political influence due to its dealings with the government, but did nothing to stop the persecution of political opponents of the regime, many of whom were employees. VW was accused of spying on employees and reporting opposition activities to political police. In 1976, mass arrests occurred and some VW employees were tortured. VW do Brasil continued to grow in market share during the regime with the goal, only produced in Brazil, winning first place in sales for 26 years straight afterwards. VW recently funded and published a full investigation on its actions during the military dictatorship. Leading up to the campaign, VW do Brasil faced environmental regulations imposed in 2013 as listed on the slide. Because the Combi bus could not, be, could not incorporate these specifications, manufacturing of the Combi would cease in Brazil, its last production market in the world. This is the Volkswagen Type 2, known officially, depending on body type, as the transporter, Combi, or microbus, or informally as the bus, or camper. It was introduced in 1950. It is also known as the hippie bus, or van, because of its popularity during the counterculture movement of the 1960s. In our SWOT analysis for VW Brazil, under strengths we have VW's historical influence in Brazil since it has been established there since 1953. VW do Brazil also has six effective production plants shown by the goal's first place in sales for 26 years straight from 1987 until 2012. The goal was specifically designed for Brazilian drivers. Under weaknesses, we have inflexibility because of VW do Brazil's inability to produce the Combi in the face of new regulations. We also have community relations because as more and more automakers enter the competitive Brazilian market, VW loses its connection with the community, especially since the company's actions during the military dictatorship are still felt today. Since Brazilians value relationships and community well-being, VW do Brazil faced an opportunity to build and improve its community relationships by tapping into the emotions connected to the Combi, since it is a widely used vehicle in Brazil and a cultural emblem of the 1960s. VW do Brazil also faced the opportunity to improve sales of Combi before the ending of manufacturing. Under threats, we of course have the new regulations imposed on automakers, which no longer made the manufacture of the Combi possible. Future regulations can make the manufacture of other vehicles impossible for VW to Brazil. They are also threatened by the possibility of losing market share in the competitive Brazilian market. Now we're going to go into our goals and objectives. So our, first, our goal is to reposition VW de Brazil as part of the Brazilian community and connect with Brazilian consumers through nostalgia. Our output objectives are to generate social media coverage of Com Combi's stories to, and then to generate views of the campaign mini documentary. Our impact objectives, the first one being attitudinal, to increase brand empathy and connection with Brazilian consumers by connecting them to the Combi, a cultural emblem and a significant vehicle in Brazil's streets. Then our behavioral impact objective is to increase audience engagement through the sharing of stories in Combi. Now we're gonna go into our campaign timeline. The first phase in October, 2013, um, they released the initial ads were released in magazines and online. So this campaign was actually carried out in three phases. In phase two, Combi's Will and Bequest ads were released. And in phase three, a mini documentary was created for social media. We assume that each, each phase for the campaign was carried out within weeks or a month of each other since it was reported to be completed by the first quarter of 2014. And to our publics, the campaign's primary public was Brazilian baby boomers in the middle class. These are those people who were involved in the counterculture movement of the 1960s and 70s and consequently share many memories with the Combi bus. They may own one or have owned one in the past. The counterculture movement surrounded going against social norms and this is shown by one of the receivers of a Combi bequest. Rolando received Combi shaped ravioli cutters after he turned his first Combi into an Italian restaurant. The second public, the secondary public was Combi owners or past owners in Gen X. There are people who grew up in the counterculture or may have admired it. The campaign targets them to take pride in their interest in the culture and show it off. This is shown by Marion, who receives a bequest of a replica of Comey's first sketches. Marion was born in a Comey. The theme of the campaign was nostalgia surrounding the Combi and its presence in Brazilian culture. 
The key messages consisted of the announcement that Combi's manufacturing would end and that Combi, the model, would like to make its last wishes to the country it was so attached to, as shown in its will and bequest. Initial print and online ads were released announcing the end of Combi's manufacture. The ads invited readers to upload stories about their Combi experience. The best stories were included in the second phase of the campaign, where Combi announced in print ads that the authors of the stories were its heirs. It also announced what it would leave in the return, the quest for all the love and friendship it got from these people. These included a hubcap signed by football league, Peli, left to a man who had traveled to every World Cup using a Combi, and a copy of the original design sketch of the bus for a woman born inside of one of its vehicles. In the campaign's final phase, a combi was used to deliver the items bequeathed in its will. A mini documentary was created for social media of the combi on its last ever journey, including meeting its brother, the son of the man who designed the model. The media channels include paid media, owned or shared media, and interpersonal communication. For paid media, VW announced in magazines that they would be discontinuing the Volkswagen bus, Combi. Later on in the campaign, the will and bequests were also published in print media that highlighted the consumer stories they had sent in. Owned and shared media involved setting up a website for Combi, where people shared the stories and memories they had on, social me on a social media platform to generate conversations surrounding the bus. A mini documentary is published on so social media platforms as well. Additionally, interpersonal communication was used to deliver the bequest items to the beneficiaries. The campaign reignited the relationship between Brazilians and the brand. After the campaign, Volkswagen consolidated its leading position in terms of brand empathy in Brazil. The campaign generated a large amount of spontaneous mentions in some of Brazil's most relevant media vehicles. With a media investment of only 580,000 US dollars, VW generated $7 million in earned media with a reach of more than 35 million people. In five days, the documentary The Combi's Last Wishes had over 1 million views, was added into the YouTube Trends playlist, and became one of the five most viral campaigns of the week. The level of engagement generated by the campaign was also incredibly positive. Out of 10,000 posts related to the campaign on Facebook and Twitter, 93% were positive comments. Out of 30,000 evaluations on YouTube, 98.8% were positive. The unlaunched campaign for Combi was also awarded with seven lions in the Keynes Creativity Festival. The unlaunched campaign for Combi ended up reigniting the passions of Brazilians for the Volkswagen brand. When VW do Brazil could no longer produce the Combi, it took its inflexibility as an opportunity to connect with Brazilian consumers. The Combi's Last Wishes campaign positioned Combi as a cultural emblem of Brazil and engaged with its audience to build a relationship and increase brand empathy. It did this through a three-phase implementation involving both print media, social media, and a mini documentary. This is an award-winning campaign and it touched all points in the circuit of culture. For representation, Brazilian culture, like many Latin American countries, is largely relationship-based. The campaign represented the Combi as something that fostered relationships and memories in Brazil. For regulation, the relationship between VW and Brazil is one of historical involvement in the economy and politics, as we spoke about earlier. In this campaign, VW strived to improve the brand empathy, not only in Brazil's competitive market, but also in regards to Brazil's history with the military dictatorship in the past. For identity, VW used the campaign to change its identity in Brazil from one of corporate foreign giant to one of local partner. For production, the campaign message was produced to position the global VW brand and Combi as a local emblem of Brazilian culture. And for consumption, the target audience decoded the message as one of nostalgia, which increased the brand empathy of VW in Brazil. For key takeaways, we learned how a weakness that can take away your competitive advantage can actually be used as an opportunity to increase brand empathy among your target public. The success of this campaign is shown in that VW do Brazil is now on the rise in market share, and VW is currently duplicating aspects of this campaign for its last breath of the Beatle campaign. For recommendations, there is an opportunity for VW to pay tribute to this campaign during the launch of the new VW bus model coming out in 2022. VW can also continue to share Combi memories 
periodically on social media. Here are our sources. Thank you for watching.